The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication. Podcast publishing made easy. Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Continuing America's love affair with comedy and those lovable characters that made us laugh. We now go back to the early days of radio comedy and our imaginations with our featured comedy presentation. sell all them bottles for the same thing. I got dozens of them back there. Going to paint them all up and have a extra special clearance closing out bargain sale of candlesticks. See to it? Well, let's see one you have painted. No, sir. No, sir. Not till they're all done and ready for the sale. Say in about uh, ten days or so. I got a lot of them to paint and then I got to let them dry for a bit. <laughs> My dad read it. I bet them candlesticks will just sell like hotcakes. That's what. Well, I hope they do. Well, so do I. Let us know when the sale goes on, will you, Uncle Luke? <laughs> I won't have to, man. I won't have to let you know. You'll probably be hearing about it from everybody. <laughs> probably get into the papers, too. Uncle Lou. Yeah? Uh, can I ask you a question about those elephants? What's that? Can I ask you a question about those elephants you told us about? Oh, oh those elephants. Why? Why? Why, sure you can, Dean. <laughs> fact is, I was wondering what you were thinking so deep about. Uh, what is it you want to know? Well, aren't you, Yes. Uh, when you sawed, when you sawed the tusks off those elephants, I mean the bull, the first time, that let them loose from the ground, didn't it? I, uh... uh who held them then, Uncle Luke? <laughs> <laughs> then? Uh, who? Why, why, shucks, <laughs> I... I guess you better talk some more about them bottles. I'll tell you about that later, Kenny. Now, what I'm going to do with this here, with these here bottles of the sale is this. I'm going to, after I get them painted, I'm going to take them their, um, them their elephant, uh, them their pop bottles. <laughs> and them give Kenny here any wrong information about Africa, how about it? Say, I'll tell you what I'd like. I'd like to hear you play something on the old melodeon. That's when I can think good when the melodeon is going. You got something you can play on that? There you go.
Well, that sounded right nice. Well, are you ready to go ahead now? You've got your plot all worked out. Oh, now, Dad, right. There ain't no plot at all to this here story. Why, shucks. You folks would have a buddy think I was I was just making this up. Oh, no, we don't, Uncle Lasana. Well, all right, then. All right. Balls anyhow. Girls play with dolls and jacks and things like that. Well, the boys said I could be first baseman on their baseball team if I'd furnish the ball, so Ma gave me the money to buy one. <laughs> baseball, eh? <laughs> you reckon you could hold it once they tossed it to you? Oh, I'm a good ball player, Uncle. <laughs> you are, eh? Mm -hmm. Well, it's your springtime, all right, when they get out the bats and balls. I, George, and if I ain't mistaken, that. Springtime sort of snuck up on me. Well, I'll see. See if I can find any baseballs. Baseballs. Here's moth balls. Todd baseballs. Don't seem to have no baseballs, though. Let's see. Tapioca. Tapioca. You reckon that'll do, Timmy? No, it's got to be a baseball. <laughs> I'd let that go at a bargain, Teeny. No, I want a baseball, Uncle Lou. Mm-hmm. Cowbell. Oh, 
practice that can do. I reckon I'm uh, smack out of baseball, Steenie. Oh, I just knew you'd be. Now I won't be able to play on the team. Oh, there, there now, Teeny. Don't carry no, on now. I want a baseball. Now, here now. You sit up here. I'll tell you a story. Favorite? I want a baseball. I don't want sit, a story. Sit still now, and I'll tell you a nice story. I ever tell you about the time when I used to play baseball? Oh, were you ball player, Uncle <laughs> Why, them scouts used to come down here every year, wanting me to join up with the big leaguers. But I never do it. I argued it wasn't fair to the local team. Um, tell me about it, will you? Well, now, come think about it. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's ask Marion and Jim to sing us a song whilst I get my facts straight, and then I'll tell you the story. Oh. Will you sing a song, Mary and Jim? What would you like to hear, Teeny? <laughs> I like that one about the horses. I, l- I like that one. Oh, yes. The king's horses, eh? Yes. Well, sing us that one, Marion and Jim, and I'll help you out a little bit. <laughs> about baseball, about baseball in the days when it was a man's game. Not something, not something for a little good for little girls like you to play. Oh, did you have fights? Fights? Sure, we had fights every inning. Well, the game I, the game I was talking about was the deciding game for the county pennant. I was pitching. Were you good pitcher, Uncle? Oh, sure. When I threw that ball, I never did see it. In fact, nobody saw it up till the ninth inning. The score was 18 to 20 in our favor. Mm, so you won, huh? I'm coming to that. Coming to that. Well, sir, the visitors came up to bat in the ninth inning, and the first man up popped a little fly to Ed Tansocker. He was playing short. Off the short. Uh-huh. I'm a good short stop, too, Uncle Lee. Now, you keep still, or I won't finish my story, Teeny. Uh, all right, I'll be quiet. And as I said, the... First man up, he knocked a little pop fly to Ed Tansucker. But what did Ed do but drop the ball? Yes, sir. Muffed it. Look at the whistle. Well, by the time he touched up and picked the batter, the batter had got all the way to second base. Now, sir, the next man up got three balls and two strikes, and then what happened but the umpire gave a bad decision and walked him. Yes, sir. I could have done plenty about that, but I didn't say a word. I just kept my tongue still. Well, that gave a man on the first and third. And nobody was out, huh? Nobody was out. Well, I'd pitched a long game, and uh, I, I don't know just what happened, but just as I was about to pitch to the next fellow, I beat Pennywhacker yelled something to me. Well, I figured that the man on first was stealing, and I sort of jerked back. But I'd already started to pitch, so rather than be called for a balk, I I let her go. And, of course, the batter hit it. Well, sir, he knocked a home run. Clear over the swords of cornfield, he knocked it. Oh. 
And so you lost the game, did you? Now, I didn't say anything about losing. As I said, this was in the days when baseball was a he-man's game. Well, and what did you do, Uncle Lou? Well, sir, I had to act fast. All I did was to yank my pistol out of my belt. We all carried pistols in them days. And I shot the runner on third base. Oh, you shot him? Yeah. Now, the rule says the runner on base can't pass another runner ahead of him, so the man I shot dropped in his tracks, and, of course, the other two couldn't pass him, so that ended the game, and we won. 1820. Mm, gee, that certainly must have been an exciting game, Uncle. Well, that ain't nothing compared to the time when we was playing. What's that, ma'am? I think it's almost supper time, Uncle Luke. Oh, so it is. Well, you sing us one more song and, and we'll all bring supper. <laughs> I never make the same mistake. 